home is a place where we really, our memory resides. It, it's going to be the place where they, they have those memories and, and have those good feelings. And it's nice to be a part of that. Welcome everyone to the Closing Table Podcast, real accounts from real estate professionals brought to you by Windowsill. I'm your host, Kat Taylor, and I've talked to a lot of real estate agents this year, and I notice a lot of themes in our conversations, and one of them is the relationships they have with their clients and the impacts their clients make on their lives and the impact they're able to make on their clients' lives through helping them not just buy homes, but start new chapters of their lives. You know, the memorable moments, being part of proposals, being part of weddings, just being parts of the next steps of their clients' lives, helping them transition from one chapter to the next. And they're really beautiful stories. So today I've collected some of my favorite memorable moments from talking to all the agents we've talked to this year. And so this is just a really heartwarming episode, you know, for you on a Friday to just, you know, feel all those good feels. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Sometimes you just out with clients, just life happens and, and there's fun things. True story. Uh, when I was a newer agent, I actually had clients that, um, you know, were going to be getting married. So when we went through a home inspection on a property, um, you know, Mr. Buyer uh, had the proposal ready to rock and roll if the home inspection went well. And so true story, um, you know, he proposed on the deck outside and I think it was like a February and I had the champagne and the balloons in the car and was able to bring that in. So you get to do things like that with people, um, you know, I, you get to sell um, the family home. So true story, I had uh, a couple I had worked with, again, when I was a newer agent, back when that foreclosure market uh, had been really difficult and it was really hard to find um, a home that would be able to be financed for their financing. Uh, they bought the home. They grew their family in that home. They've sold the home. They've moved into a new home. I went to their wedding. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of touch points that make this, uh, you know, really kind of a special career. I mean, we get to, you know, start with people and kind of come alongside them in their life's journey. And th that's really fulfilling. That is so amazing. That's like, you know, you were on TV, but that was like a hallmark moment, right? To be involved in a proposal. Oh, absolutely. And it wasn't with the, the House Hunters uh, group. It was, you know, <laughs> long ago. Um, in fact, I think they've been married probably 20 years now, but really fun to be a, a part of special points in people's lives. And, you know, our home is where life happens. We raise our family. You know, we get our first pet, you know, we, you know, we live in the home and have memories. You know, I drive past my childhood home, you know, every time I'm in Redford and have great memories of all the parties that we had there, you know, for my eighth grade party, you know, for, you know, my, my graduation from college, you know, um, all the touchstone points, um, Thanksgiving meals with the family, you know, our home is a place where we really our memory resides. And in selling real estate, we're helping people not just with uh, an investment, but it, it's going to be the place where they they have those memories and, and have those good feelings. And it's nice to be a part of that. Speaking of your clients, do you have kind of any memorable client moments or, or stories? I mean, there, there's a lot and they're all, they're all different, right? Um, different clients are happy because they're able to sort of get in, build their dream house. A lot of the Eastbrook homes that we do. So we're, we're subcontracted by Eastbrook homes to provide new home builds in, in college fields, White Hills, Thomas Farms and DeWitt, Bonnie Meadows and Hazlitt. And a lot of those are some really cool stories where they've really missed out on a lot of homes. And now that they get this opportunity to build their dream house, um, we do these things where they get to mark up their house. And um, yeah, I, I don't wanna like sort of overstep my boundaries of sort of my client's privilege, but there was a sick, sick family member and um, they went into the house, into the drywalls before sort of, before the, the drywall came on and in markers, they marked the house with sort of 
with prayers, happy thoughts. And so then the drywall is all down, but they know like in behind that drywall that there's these prayers and happy thoughts for their sick family member. And, and, um, as of, as of now, the family member is in really good shape. So it, it was really cool and, and not everything works out like that, but that was a really cool moment, um, for us to sort of be a part of, uh, but yeah, it was pretty sweet. Oh my gosh. I just got chills. <laughs> that one was, that one was cool. Um, that wasn't me directly, but that was Karen. And she told us the story and I was like, this is unbelievable. Um, but yeah. That's cool. Cause there is, you, you read stories, there's history of, of people, you know, with different belief systems, putting things in walls, whether it's maybe to ward off bad spirits or, or things like that, you know, in older homes, but you don't really hear about people doing that in 2024. We, uh, we, we are so now cool. doing that for every Eastbrook home. So if you want to come <gasps> in and you're building your house, every single person, because the story got told to the people up, up top at Eastbrook and they were like, all right, let's do this. Let's mark up your house. But that's what it's now called. So before the drywall meeting, you get a key to the house so you can go in and you can mark it up however you want. It's a, it's a really cool thing. And then there's just so many times that you're just rooting for your clients. You know, you've been through, you've been through just battles where you're getting outbid, you're getting overbid. And then all of a sudden the right house comes up and you're the top, top candidate and you, you get the house for your clients and you're just over here just like, oh my gosh, could this have worked out any better? And it's always, I think it's always about timing and you don't want to rush yourself into a situation just because you've lost out on 10 houses. Doesn't mean you should offer a crazy amount for the 11th, just because it's the 11th house. You should offer it because you love it. And, uh, and I think again, by, by managing expectations, knowing that you shouldn't be running left and right, offering X, Y, or Z, like offer what you want. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And I think that's really led to a lot of great reviews. If you look at our sort of website, you'll see a lot of really strong reviews because we we do a good job of, again, managing expectations and, and making sure that they're getting the situation that they want. I love this story about the, you know, marking up the walls, at love notes, <laughs> prayers, whatever you want to call them. You know, yeah. it's, and I, what I love is it's like, it's like a secret, right? Nobody's going to paint over it, right? It's mm -hmm. not your heights on the, the door trim that when you leave is going to be gone forever. Um, so that is, oh, gosh, that's so special. Do you have any memorable client stories so far? Or like maybe if you want to tell us about your first transaction and how that went? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Lots of memorable ones so far. Um just because, you know, this business is so much about different personalities and it, it tends to get very interesting. My first transaction, though, is actually, that's a good story. So um, this was a, a teacher who I had worked with, but not very much. I didn't I didn't know her very well. And she came to me initially as a, a rental client. Um, and we were going to look at uh, rentals in our area. Um Long story short, after I'd sort of talked to her and got an idea of her financial picture and what she was looking for, it kind of sounded like she might potentially be able to buy. Um, you know, here we were looking at a townhome for rent that was, I think, like thirty-two or thirty-three hundred dollars a month, and it was literally on the same street as the same exact townhome further down that was for sale at a price point where. Even if she didn't put 20% down, I mean, it was just kind of doing the math in my head. I'm like, her monthly payment would be way less than this rental payment. You know, that just kind of triggered me to start asking her questions about, well, why are you renting instead of buying? And, you know, it turned out that it wasn't so much a financial constraint as it was um, that she just didn't think she could. You know, she had kind of all these myths in her head of, well, I, I don't have 20% down or I don't... Um, you know, I just don't think I can, I, she thought she couldn't afford it. Um, but I think it was more of a, it's, it's kind of interesting. I think some people think that home ownership isn't for them or isn't available to them, even though financially it could be. Um, so, you know, it just took a little bit of coming back to the table and sitting down, looking at the numbers. I connected her with a really great lender that had 
um, some community partner programs going on, which we do a lot of here in Maryland, um, down payment assistance grants and um, things like that for people who work in, you know, education, military, nursing, et cetera. And long story short, we were able to make it happen. Um, and she ended up in, you know, through a, a long search, she ended up getting this beautiful detached home on about an acre of land. She was able to have dogs again, which she hadn't been able to have since she was younger and, um, you know, being a renter and everything. So she has two dogs now that run around in her fenced in backyard and she sends me pictures and videos of them all the time. And I don't know, it's just, that was, that was a really, it was a really great one. Um, just because I felt like, you know, I helped her achieve a goal that maybe she didn't know was even within reach for her. And, and, and being a teacher too always helps. I, I love helping fellow teachers. So. Oh, that you, I mean, you changed her life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You know, especially being able to have animals again, I'm not a particularly dog person, but you know, those types of companions, they, they change our lives. And so being able to kind of bring that back into our life. I don't know. That's a really sweet story. Uh, gosh. Well, here's one because it ends up being like six stories all in one. Um, so when I first got my oh, okay. license, um, I there was a, a mom, another mom. I hadn't met her yet, but we were part of a mom group on Facebook. And I think I'd had my license for maybe a month and she reached out and she said, you know, Hey, my mom's moving up from North Carolina. And, um, would you be willing to show us some houses? Sure. Okay. So we saw maybe 25 houses and I learned a lot with her and I ended up I didn't fire the client, but we kind of suspended her because I said to her daughter, I don't think your mom actually wants to move here. You might want to have a conversation with her about that because it was like these floors creak too much. And, um, you know, this is too far away. Like, the, you know, all those tiny little things that don't really make a difference, but they were all stopping her. Right. So she had a long talk with her mom. And her mom was like, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't want to move yet. So, okay. So I learned from that, that I also get to be choosy with my clients in that I'm not going to be the realtor for everybody. And I'm okay with that. And learning that and accepting that was huge, I think, for my growth and my ability to be confident and be okay with what I do. But then her daughter says, well, we want a different house now because we need to upsize. We need to go. So then we started looking at houses. But then we started looking at land. <laughs> and then we ended up getting land. So then mm -hmm. I had to learn how to buy land. Um, then we found a builder. And then that experience didn't go well. So we found a different builder. So then I learned about how to work with custom builders. And this was all in less than a year. So then they built their house. And I think that the following summer when their house was being built, the mom tried again to move up, didn't move. Then last year, their house was, their beautiful house in Celine was built. So then I sold their other house that they had they closed on their new house. And then this past January, her mom finally bought a place up here. <laughs> and I feel like we finally went full circle that she came around. And then they said, well, we want to get some investment properties, but down in Ohio. I don't, I'm not licensed in Ohio. So then I helped them get a place, a, a realtor down in Ohio. And then I was able to help find a realtor in North Carolina for her mom because it was a huge move for her and she didn't know anybody. And so I did the vetting and finding somebody. And again, it's, it's helping women and helping a woman who has been on her own for 
decades and was so overwhelmed. And it's like, I will, I cannot physically do it myself, but I will find somebody to walk you through the whole process. So you feel good about what you're doing. And that one is just special to me because we started with her mom. We ended up with them, came back to her mom. I mean, it's, it felt like a very full circle moment. So that one was really big. And then I would say probably my other one was um, actually from the same mom group. So what do you know, mm -hmm. mom groups? <laughs> um, we started talking well before she was ever looking for a house. I was, it was during COVID times and I was feeling like I was missing connection with people. And so I just started calling people to check in, whether I knew them well or not, but just a, hey, how you doing? What's going on? And just talking and having a heart to heart. And we just started connecting. And she, I remember at the end of that first phone call, she's like, thank you for this. This, this was really nice. I don't think anyone ever does this. And I think she's right. You know, it's just, we get live in such a digital world that we don't talk as much as we used to. So anyway, we then talked a bunch and I had found out about her therapy and what was going on with her divorce. And, and then she calls me and she says, I'm ready to buy a house. That's amazing. She had left, she was ready. And the day that she signed her closing papers after leaving this terrible marriage and feeling safe, having her own place, her own space with her kids, that's the one that gets me all choked up because it started from just trying to grow a friendship to helping her find a place where she felt comfortable and safe and at home and empowered because she was doing something on her own. That one still gets me. I would have to say my favorite. I uh, met this client. She called me from, uh, she seen me online and she says, I've been looking for a house for three years. I'm not having any luck. Um, I am six months pregnant. I'm getting married in two months. Oh. I need to find a house now. And I'm like, oh, the pressure. Okay, I'll see what I can do. So um, I dedicated my time to her full time. Uh, new listings that came out that I thought she might like, I sent them right over to her immediately. I made myself available to go look at those properties with her right away. So she'd probably see something at about 9 a.m. and she'd be calling me by 10 a.m. like, oh, can we go see this one? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, vacant ones we saw the same day, but um, ones that were uh, occupied, we had to give them a little bit of notice, like 24 hour notice. So it took us uh, three weeks of house hunting to find the perfect house. Her offer got accepted on the first property she wrote an offer on, which sometimes never happens. Usually buyers write about two to, it could be 10 offers depending on the market. Uh, but her first offer got accepted. We went through the inspection, the whole process with ease. And it just never happens. Like usually there's a problem that comes up. Or, uh, it was just really easy. So I'm like, oh, this is just so meant to be. And it was beautiful. They uh, they invited me to their wedding. Oh, um, good. Yeah. And um, she had like a, her reception was at the house that they brought. <gasps> like, I don't know how they planned it to work out that fast, that way. But it was just absolutely gorgeous to be a part of that uh, big moment in their life. Wow, they absolutely needed that out. <laughs> they needed it like right away. <laughs> oh my, that is a story I would remember too. And I, gosh, that's so like risky, right? Like we're having an at-home oh, reception. Yeah. Where's your home? We don't know yet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Yeah, and they had about 200 guests there, so. Oh, wow. Oh, their uh, their wedding planner, like, she must have been some sort of magician, but it it all all worked out, and it was great. Oh, wow, that's so fun. (laughs) It's not the number, but it's, you know, who am I serving? Um, And I'm looking at one of the notes here that a client left me. I keep a lot of my notes, like, just on my desk and stuff like that, and she, uh, it was a person that I didn't even know and just, you know, struck up a conversation with her and let her know, hey, um, you know, did you know that your condo could sell for 150000 more than what you bought it for? And she didn't know that. And she wrote me the sweetest note, Kat, and she just said, you know, I knew, I usually don't answer my phone or anything like that, but when you called, I felt like I should, and I'm so glad that I did because you were kind like you were great at communication and you helped me. And I think for me, that's the most important thing is like, you know, obviously we have to find things that, you know, you know help us, uh, you know, live, right. We have to make a living. But um, I think for me, um, that really wasn't my motivation. Like to get into real estate was money. It was how can I expand what I do and how can I help people? Um, because ultimately we're in the life changing business. I mean, for her, you know, 150 grand was uh, between the difference of retiring next year or in 10 years from now. And so um, that's, that's just, you know, that's where I come from. And that's what I want to do. Thank you for listening to the Closing Table podcast brought to you by Windowsill. I'm your host, Kat Schooler. Please be sure you're following our podcast on Apple or Spotify. And if you're part of our YouTube audience, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're enjoying this podcast, please consider leaving us a comment or review. It helps us find more amazing listeners like you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.